So there's the best show of the next six months. It just came out. It's going to be, it's 90 Day Fiance, uh, Happily Ever After. And it talks about where the couples are at now. It is so unbelievable. But the thing I want to talk to you about is this guy who's from like Samoa, Samo or whatever. Samoa? Don't look at me. Yeah, but the way he says it is not, that's not proper. It's like Samo. He says it, for, okay. whatever. Like a Hawaii, like The Rock. Um, like, that's, that's where he's from, right? That's where he's from? Yeah, isn't he that's Samoan? A place in Hawaii. Well, there's an island, too, of Samoa. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And he's from Man, there. I hope I'm right. And he, I think you are right. And okay. he's talking, like, they're talking about what the last two years have been like. They've had two children. Mm -hmm. He moved here from Samoa. He mm -hmm. had, they had two children. And he's going, uh, I don't know what her problem is, like, all she has to do, she has an easy job. All she has to do is stay home and take care of these two kids while I go out to work every day. And then they show him at work. He's passing out frozen yogurt samples at a mall, and he can't remember the word dessert. Like some woman, here? like some woman tries to like, she's like, oh, I just had dinner. And he's like, well, he's this can treat. be, he's like, this is, he can't, it's like he had a brain freeze, but didn't try his frozen yogurt. He, he's. Enjoy your tasty. <laughs> He's, it's, it's <laughs> the most unbelievable, it's the best TV. So that's why I wanted to talk about, is raising two children a very easy job? I feel like you, <laughs> you, you can tell us what happened to you just now and explain how easy it is. Uh, yeah, so, you know, kids, um, it was very <laughs> innocent. Bo was tickling Jack. Like, it was like one of those moments where like, yeah, they're getting along, they're playing, like you thinking, look, and like. Jack has a hard, big head, and it hit Bo wrong right here, and there was blood, and we were had to wait it out to see if the nose was broken. Yeesh. There's never a. There's literally never like you c with Jack at his this age too. He's two and a half. Like you, c I. There's nothing I can do until he's asleep. I, if I just like tie my shoe, I'll look up. He's standing on my middle <laughs> island holding up the glass cover of the candle and like a fucking Oreo. Like the other day he pulled his chair. I literally went to pee. I'm like, Bo, you got him? He's like, yeah. Next thing he's like playing Roblox. I go to pee. I come back. Jack has pulled the chair up to the sink where all like my dirty dishes are and just smashes a mason jar in the <laughs> sink. And he's like, doing dishes. I'm like, no. Uh, <laughs> so it's easy. He's right. The Simone guy's it's right. So it's so He's still better so at dishes stressful. than Lindsay. <laughs> We'll send him to still dish better. together. Well, sorry that happened to you. So he's, I never he's sit okay. next to you. I know. This feels this feels weird. No, it feels right. It, <laughs> <laughs> I love it. It feels, it feels so good. Right. Everything's fine. He's fine. I just like I couldn't peace out. I hate being late. It like really stresses me out. Like to have people wait for me and not be where I said I'm supposed to be at a certain time. But it's just one of those things where like I can't. I can't be like you're gonna you're gonna be okay. I gotta leave. Like to me, then I start thinking like this is what he's gonna remember. Like, oh uh, yeah, I was really hurt one day, and my, my mom, mom just left. like fucking peaced out. So, right. you know that has that trumps it. You know. Well, look, you're here, <laughs> and then we made you wait, so there's no guilt. You did. Yeah. You made me wait. Yeah. Yeah. We were supposed to get a sandwich, or uh, place this order 30 minutes ago, and then it took. Still not ready. Oh, I there's mean, something about here. Remember, like it's an avocado toast. toast. What did they have mm. to do? Hey, those you do the thing those and you girls. Split maybe it? the avocado wasn't ripe. Right. Those yeah. girls on YouTube make it real fast and easy. Mm. Did you get any messages from Blair Walnuts? Where would I get messages? I have no social media. There's no yeah. way to connect no with to Rob, Rob. Yeah. online. Did you? did you? You know what? On the way home, no, I, I did not. But on the way home, Rob uh, uh, replied to people on Instagram as Rob. <gasps> on yours or on pajama on, uh, pants? On ours. Yeah, well, he's like... Would oh, he's you like, feel comfortable like downloading Instagram on your phone? Uh, no. To, why don't he's you scared. want it? Because he's you're going to be addicted? No, I just hate... All of it. Like, I hate just because I become the same reason I hate my phone in general. I'm just not yeah. present. Like, as soon as I'm, I'm absent, like, I'm just not, pay like, but I you was, don't have the self control you're saying. No, no, no. I don't like, I don't like using it at all. Like, even if it's, if I was like, hey, I'm going to use it for five minutes a day, I hate, I hate that whole feeling of that. Like, I was, I hadn't seen my friend in three months. I was walking, or no, I was going for a run in my neighborhood. And I saw, like, I'm like, oh, shit, I think that's my friend. I see him coming. And, like, as he's running up, before he's even, like, how are you, anything, like, he takes out the phone to, like, video it to be like, oh, guess who I bumped into? The and I'm like, mm. you're, I'm not mm -hmm. talking to you. It's like bumping into a phone. Mm -hmm. right? Like, I, I, I hate mm -hmm. that whole 
I get that. Thing. I get I'm it, with dude. You on that. Hey, I'm with you on dinosaur that. Dinosaur Rob over here. I, Grandpa I, I don't enjoy it. I, le- I leave my phone for hours at a time during the day. Right. <clears throat> Truly. Like, I'll leave it in the kitchen and then go do my thing. And, like, unless I know I have something specific that I'm, like, waiting to, you know, hear from or respond to, I'll leave my phone for a long time because of that reason, too. Do you follow anyone on social media that you're, like, embarrassed that you follow? Like, how I was like, oh, I'm, I'm embarrassed I watch those. No. No? No. <laughs> I follow, like, some por- I follow some porn stars just because I'm friends with them. Hey. But sometimes when I open up the the timeline and I'm scrolling through and it's just like ass, tits, 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 fat spread, vag. Well, not. I mean, I wouldn't be up. But you know what I mean, like legs, butt. I might, I might download Instagram again. When I, when I, when Cutter and I were first dating, not first dating, when we first had Bo, okay, we were living with the host family in, in Pennsylvania. He was playing every day. I've got this newborn baby. I have like postpartum depression, like all this type of <laughs> shit. I remember I was like giving a bath to Bo and... I, I was, you know, so a cutter was already at the field. I couldn't go to the game because the baby had to go to bed. So I would just sit in these people's house. Like, you know, I just met, like listening to his game, watching a quiet TV while my baby slept. It was just a real bummer. See, that, that guy from Smo was But right. I went on Sounds his Instagram because I was like, who does Cutter follow? And I saw like all these like butt models, I call them, like tit and butt models. Mm-hmm. That, like, And I was yeah. so mad. Because I was like, I, again, I, I had I set the backdrop of the state I was in, but I was like, I remember he got home from the game, and because I wasn't gonna text him before a game, you know, I'm, I'm thoughtful like that. But I was so like, sweet. what the Good fuck, luck. man? <laughs> yeah, had a great with some, game, with some, dick. Uh, with, a, with a screenshot of some. <laughs> yeah. Broader Who the out. fuck is this? <laughs> no, but I was like, how do Catch you think the ball, this baby. makes me feel that like when you're in the locker room, like you just scrolling Instagram. Free as a bird, get yeah. ready for your game, look at all these other girls' tits and asses, and I'm sitting here, like, nursing your baby to sleep in a stranger's house, yeah. like, alone. Like, I think this that's is not totally, cool, man. that's a totally normal and okay feeling. Really? It wasn't yeah, yeah, just yeah. in the moment? Because well, I'm look, actually what, still upset about at it any, right now. <laughs> because at any moment, he, he opens it, or I open my Instagram, I am greeted. Mm-hmm. I am shaking hands at the door of all these women Temptation. who are... Well, I mean, yeah, and they're not my girlfriend. And then I start looking at that butt, and I go, yeah, that's a nice butt, or those are nice boobs. And then I look over at my girlfriend, I'm like, yeah, you don't got that, do you? No, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe oh, one day. Shit. Uh, no, she, but I could see, I could see why you would be like, if that's all you're looking at all day, you know. Yes. And then, you know, why, why, yeah, I get it. But uh, look, I, I, I try not to have too many of them. They're just people that have either interviewed you have a responsible or, about. I just want to be a good friend to them, you know, and know what's going on in their lives. Right, right. You know what I mean? Oh, she has a new OnlyFans update, or like she's actually doing this on Patreon now. Like that's me supporting my friends. Right. You're just I, a good guy. She's got a new Gonzo guy. scene, you know, up on X Hamster, and I've got to go check, <laughs> I've got to go check that out. You've got to promote it for your friend. Um, look, so, um, ba- back to the 90 day fiance, if I can, oh, just for please. one second, it's uh, so there is a, he's got me in, I'm, I'm now oh. TiVoing. There's a, this, T-voing. Uh, a, a spinoff. I do. I have TiVo. I know people say that and they think I'm a fucking, <laughs> um, uh, an old fogey, but you I have, have TiVo, TiVo and it goes, boop, 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 boop. I have the I fucking classic TiVo. TiVo. Yeah. And I made sure to have it. So I used to sell them at Best Buy 20 years ago, mm. and I love them still today. Weird. They're a great company. And um, so I TiVo 90 Day Fiance. Uh, the other way. The, it's called 90 Day Fiance The Other Way, because apparently- oh, So many spinoffs. I know, it's horrible. They're, they're, they know like 10 years from now, no one's gonna be talking about it. They have so many spinoffs. They are milking every ounce of content out of this well, franchise as possible. As so, they should, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so now, the conceit of this spinoff is the uh, you're dating someone, you say you're in the U- United States, you're dating somebody in another country, that person cannot leave their country for whatever reason. So Usually because they're a convicted felon, but they won't admit it. <laughs> <laughs> cool. They're like, oh, I don't know why yeah. this, this K-1 visa is not going well, through. Well, this, oh, this is what I want to get into. But like, yeah, so there's the American citizen is now going to the other country. Mm -hmm. And by the way, as American citizens, you guys should all feel proud that the American passport is like among one of the best passports to have. It lets you into 
a, 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 an enormous amount of other countries. Whereas if you were like myself, Jordanian, and I have a Jordanian passport as well, the amount Congrats. of places the Jordanian passport lets you into, um, the amount of other countries, much smaller list. Oh. So, so, so what happens is these American citizens have to go to these countries of the people they're dating. This season, and this is such a treat for me, and I was born in Jordan, as you as you guys may know. Um, there is a uh, a black woman from My- Miami or Palm Beach, Florida. Yeah, she is. Uh, she kind of looks like these Instagram, these button boob uh, girls on Instagram. She's she's pretty. Up. She's got braces. Maybe Cutter follows her. Possible. Um, and she, in her like roll up package, uh, when they're introducing us uh, to her, she's like twerking, she's drinking like straight from the bottle and just <laughs> dancing on like, you know, on that drag right there in Miami or wherever. And she turns out she's dating somebody in Jordan. She's dating a man, uh, his name is Yazan, in <laughs> Jordan. And she's moving to Jordan. And if you don't know, Jordan is a great country. And I'm going to try and do this delicately because half my heart. Of course. I'm half Egyptian, half Jordanian. Got to be honest. So um, I was born in Jordan. I'm a Jordanian citizen. But if you're an American and you're, um, it's a great place to visit quickly. Mm -hmm. But to move there is uh, an entirely different thing. And it is such a culture clash between this black woman and her lifestyle in Florida and Yazan, who is now, um, he's, he's Muslim and he's asking her to convert to Muslim. And and then she has a line where she's like, yeah, like Yazan always talks about Islam, but like whenever he does, I just change the subject. (laughs) And it's (laughs) unfortunately for her, just eventually fizzle out. And they cut to her like twerking, pouring champagne on her head. And she's like, I just, you know, like I, I try and avoid. And there's a very, um, it's not misogyny, but it's mm-hmm. definitely if there was a scale in the Middle Eastern portrayal of women is a little more regressed than it is here in the United States, as you could imagine. You know, like yes. women just got the ability to drive in, in Saudi Arabia like years ago. Yes. Recently. Yes. So the male attitude towards females in the Middle East, as you could expect, Maybe not where we are today in 2020. And we, we, we have a lot of things we haven't figured out here yet. You know, the Me Too movement, it, that, that's all kind of relatively recent. But um, there was a scene where she's like talking to him and he's driving and he's he's saying, halas, halas, halas. And it's just, that's Arabic for enough or stop. <laughs> and it's like, Mike, Lindsay was watching him. She's like, you do that. And I'm like, I do not. <laughs> you do I, it, yeah. I do not. You've but heard him do that's it. That's what he does in the car on the way here all the time. <laughs> Yeah, he, he oh, freaks out. I get out. such a treat to see these two cultures coming together, and oh, I like to think yeah. I'm, a, I, I'm, uh, I've got a lot of the American what goodness. What brought them together is my question. Oh, I don't know, but there's only been Trauma. two episodes yet. Trauma. There, I would think. So if anyone's Trauma. watching this, consider me your uh, Jordanian liaison. Yes. And I would love to walk anyone through, uh, you know, my experience with Jordan as a country. And what it's like to be here, and what it would be like to date. You would have been a great consultant for them. You like I a great mediator for the two of them of how to blend the cultures, possibly. Absolutely. And let me just say, I don't think it's going to work out. I think that's I'm my hunch. You. But it's also like coming off our last episode and all the wonderful things you said. You're kind of showing yourself to be a little bit of a racist right now. <laughs> Why? You wouldn't watch the show all the time. I tried to get you, and now there's a guy from Jordan on, and you're tivoing it. Right. No. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So let's it, move on to the next. Uh, yeah. Can thanks, we Rob. talk a Great little bit point. more about reality television, though? Because, Please. Because of the, of all of the COVID stuff, I feel like at some point we're going to be running out of content. That's why I'm saying this is the next six and months. This is difficult. But what's really bothering me is at this very time, Big Brother would have been starting. Like and you this, love, Big and Brother. that's like my yeah. fucking jam. Okay. It is the ultimate quarantine thing. Yeah. Like they cast these people, they have to live in isolation for two weeks to like desensitize them from mm-hmm. the real world, do a psychiatric evaluation. And then you put them in a house where they see nobody with only cameras, no crew. Like how the fuck CBS is not still doing Big Brother? Like this is a huge money maker. This is like, mm-hmm. this is my summer yeah. is, is fucking ruined. And I'm so, I don't get it. Like you, I will argue anyone under the table of why the fuck Big Brother's not happening. Like, sure. 
I and Who's I. Who's the head of CBS now, right? If Les only you got it's not less. It? If only you got this passionate about your son breaking his nose. You're... What do you mean? <laughs> yeah, this is very impassioned. You mean that I still actually left? Th- this is the... No, it's no, no, not no, broken. Kidding. Wasn't this there a, a I'm thing... I'm still checking if I need to I'm go kidding. Back. This is the most passionate I've ever seen you. I love it. Well, be- because it doesn't... It's literally like fucking idiotic. Like Somebody would probably be sitting here and be like, what show can we make in these COVID times? Big Brother. Yeah. See, these it's are the people... Test them. Test them. These are the They're people not, who they write... don't have COVID. Get them in the house. These are the people who would write emails back in the day. Like, you know, or like before you could do email, I mean, like, they would write a letter. Well, you know, the only Facebook group I ever joined was when I was nine months pregnant with Bo during the summer of Big Brother, and I joined an oh I God, hate you... blank blank Facebook page. It was you a can't person, just say her name. It was a person Nerd. on on Big Brother that's different because she was so awful, and I was so hormonal, and I, like... I was like, this bitch. How can yes, I use I my to fame to, to other... take her down? No. <laughs> <laughs> I need to talk to other people that are as infuriated by her Let as me ask I you am. this question about Big Brother. Were they not filming a season when no, it's Corona? Live. It because happens. there was a thing in the news where they were like, the, here's Celebrity. footage of them being told that there's a pandemic outbreak. Oh, maybe it was in a, maybe it was a can the Canadian one or something. Oh, okay. Not they no. It's only in the summer, and okay. then they started doing Celebrity Big Brother in the winter. Oh, I see. They, they did for the first time last year, but they didn't do this year, I think, because of yeah the coronavirus. But I just like when they can't they announced in like March that there or April that there would be no Big Brother. I was like, can I? And offer- I was holding out that like somebody would be smart enough to be like, no, what, what are we doing? This yeah. is a this is a show about isolating people in a house. Yeah. Can I offer a replacement? Uh, 90 Day Fiance. But then I feel like I need to go, if I'm watching where no, they no. are now, I need to like know how they got there. No. It's like a lot No, no, no. The first 40... I'm still on season two of Sopranos and I started in week one <laughs> of the quarantine. And I was on the fucking this show. This is fucking nose is broken. <laughs> the, you don't have to go back at all. In the first 40 minutes of the show, they sum up everything that happened to all these people in their seasons and their seasons, I'm telling you, they have, it's like, it's like, the all-star team of the... It's like when you put a team together for the Olympics, what they've put together for this show. It is... It's it's going to be... I, I promise you, if you watch it, you'll fucking you know love what? it. I, pr- I believe you, and I really think what I'm holding out for is the time when both my kids are in school. I'm, I'm going to not leave my couch, and I will binge the fuck out of anything, but like... I'm, I think I'm just gonna bank it all for then the, because the f- I'll probably blow through some stuff. The first I'm gonna thing have n- I'm gonna I'm gonna be like the worst human on the planet from between the hours. Yeah, yeah. you're gonna That's be what me. Rob is now. Yeah, eight thirty and three p.m. I'm just Thanks. gonna literally sit on my couch and be unproductive. And your life will still be way more fulfilling than mine. No, well, yeah. no, because then at three p.m. Because you'll have kids at least. Starts. Yeah, <laughs> the. Uh, so like in the first episode, one of the first things there's this 300 pound woman who's mm-hmm. with this like Nigerian guy who like clearly is cheating on her, and she catches him, and he says, you know, like, oh well, th-. he tries to make excuses, and she's like, listen, I think he tries to have a sincere moment with her. She's like, I think you were just horny and out and looking for a blowjob, and he looks at her, he's like, you're right, and she's like, what? flips out right so that's last season she's, she's honest like, she's like this season Very. is totally different she's like i moved into a new house so michael could come move in here with my six grandkids me and him and she's like 50 something she's like i'm gonna try and have a baby i just had my period for the first time in two years she jamie you have to fucking watch the show it's so unbelievable and she gets on the phone with him facetiming like hey honey we just you know we just started filming look this is the house everything and his phone rings in the back and she's like hey that's not your ringtone and he's like, oh, like, no, 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 don't worry about it. And she's like, that was a custom ringtone. And he know, and she knows that it's like a chick. It's, it's, and she has six grandkids running around the house this time. And then after- She has six grandkids? Six grandkids. And she had just come from taking a twerking class because he really likes twerking. So uh. she's like, she's like 300 pounds twerking in the class. She's like, oh, Michael's going to love this. Uh. And she's, I can't believe you're pitching this to me right Jamie, now. Jamie, it is the best. Like, I swear there's times where- if somebody looked into my living room, they would think I like I was watching the tape from the ring where people are like, like because my mouth will literally be hanging open. And I'm like, are these people really? How is this real life? I don't understand. And then she's like, finds out two weeks later he got a blowjob again from another woman, and th- and he, and she's like, well, he I'm likes gonna blowjobs. Yeah, and she's like, I'm gonna go there and we're gonna get married. Yeah, th- who doesn't? 
Yeah, but I like, got one last night. Whoa. Well, whoa. Yeah, and it was it Anytime was time Cutter think, asked me for a blowjob. And it doesn't happen often. New mask. It doesn't happen often. Ooh. Do you like my new mask? I love your new They're mask. They're our sponsor. Oh, let's go from blowjobs to our new sponsor. Great, great. Um what I want <laughs> <laughs> That's what they want to be associated with. Well, okay, look, we just How cute are my cherries? Uh yeah. <laughs> cherries. This you said you weren't wearing a bra time. today. <laughs> okay, I'm not wearing a bra. I'm, I have conditioner in my hair, and I'm not wearing a bra. Um, your cherries look cute, great. Wow, look at this cute tie dye one. Oh, you had a tie dye one too. I got a I got the tie dye one. Let's Here's tell the problem. Them what it is. Here's the problem I'm having. We have a new sponsor for today, and by the way. And they're so soft. Bra Brad, it's a uh, Braddock USA. BraddockUSA.com. They make these face masks. Um, I spent twenty six dollars. Lindsay spent twenty six dollars on a face mask at Erewhon. And it's the oh. one of the most uncomfortable. It's one of these guys that really leaves your ear sore because of the 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 rubber or the it's too tight. The elastic's too tight. Mm. I took one of these out of the box that they sent us, and um, not only is is the fabric soft, it's actually made from upcycle jersey t-shirts you can feel it it's yeah so super soft. soft. But the most important part is it doesn't hurt my ears, and no, I have big ears. Not, they're very thin. Super the elastic. thin. Yeah, yeah, super thin, and they feel good. And um, the other part is, I just have to leave one in every part. Like, leave one by my keys. I leave one in my car. Yep. I have two vehicles. I put one in each vehicle. God. The nine eleven turbo yeah. and a Toyota Tacoma. Yeah. Um, I do. I do too. I leave. I leave masks everywhere now. Yeah. I have one in my purse, in my car, same. It's yeah. becoming that thing where you got to have it on you at all times yes. because you're not going to be able to go anywhere. It's a new reality. And it's honestly. If you're not fucking wearing a mask every day when you go out somewhere, you are the problem. Well, and I also, would... <laughs> it's very important. Because let's say there's a 1% chance you save one fucking person. Just do it. Like, what's the big... Yes, and yeah. do it. And do it in style. And do it with this super soft jersey material with the Braddock's Daily Face Covers. Yeah. Um, look, we have the same promo code. It's PJ Pants. Go to BraddockUSA.com. You'll get free shipping and 20% off your face mask. They have tie-dye. They have solid colors. They have plaid. Um, they and have all the kinds of stuff. they're not the shitty Air One they're, expensive ones. If you've been looking, if you, if you go to the store like me and, you, and you're at the checkout counter and they have those impulse buy face masks and you're like, I just want to feel what this is like. This is what you've been looking for. Yes. It's super soft, and you should have more than one. By it's, the way, it's oh. the only mask that Kasim G wears. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Uh, and also, the gym just opened up. I'm back in the gym. My I gym, know. you have to work out with a face mask now. You do. Yeah, I'm, I'm only wearing these masks. What? Stay, to get your daily face cover, go to BraddockUSA.com, putting PJ Pants. He's holding them up right now. These are P fucking dope. 20% off, free shipping, um, your entire order all the way through July 4th. BraddockUSA.com, promo code PJPants. Thanks for supporting the people that support the show. Yeah, yeah. Just Rob, shut up. Don't say... <laughs> shut up for a second. It's time... Will... Shut up. It's time for our sponsor. Yep. Manscaped.com's back. Okay. Um, so Manscaped's back. You know what's um, something we haven't talked about is the Perfect Package 3.0. Okay. This is a package that comes with a toiletry bag a nice little thing that you can take on uh, weekend getaways you put your stuff in there okay they they put stuff in there for you this is what you get you get ball deodorant okay you get ball toner you get uh boxer briefs and the lawnmower 3.0 all in one package well you know what's what's interesting is they said would you show up back to school you because after this quarantine you're gonna start seeing people again they said would you show up back to school with no haircut? And listen, I showed up back to pajama pants with no haircut here. But down here is becoming more important these days mm -hmm. than this whole thing. And it, yep. yep. And I can testify. I've seen it. I've seen exactly what's going on down behind. He, he did it. His panties. He, sh he shaved me. Yeah. Uh, he's never looked fresher and younger, I might add. I make him do it with his glasses off. Um, you know what? And I put that aloe vera witch hazel right on his little legs down there. Just slap yeah, them on. They're tone as fuck. You got to be careful because you use too much of that stuff. You can have a good time in that bathroom. Not me. I, I basically bathe in it and yeah. nothing. Oh, well, you're dead down there. <laughs> hey, uh, PJ Pants is the promo code. Go to manscaped.com. You get 20% off your first order and free shipping. Yeah, 20% off whatever you want on there. PJ P-A-N-T-S. Manscaped.com. Thanks for supporting them.
And now, <laughs> Jamie, let's go to some emails. Okay. Um, all right. This one is from Alexa. The uh... Oh, wait. Back to the blowjob. Why? Man, this guy is a I prince. just want to, because it was a funny moment, right? Oh, I'm, did I take away? I didn't mean to take no, away. No, no, no. I just wanted, this is the conversation we had yesterday. She doesn't like giving blowjobs. She did one. I, I received it. It was, inc- it was nice. And she's you like, well, hi, how about that? I gave you one. You could tally that one up. I'm like, yeah, I think I'll tally this one right across the other four that you've given me in the last year we've dated. Huh? <laughs> Look at Jamie's face. Is that, that Jamie, is that, is that not enough blowjobs in a year? Five? Oh, I don't give a shit. No, I just, I, you know, we don't have time. We have to get right to the point a lot of the time. But they I'd have they have, have nothing more, else to do. She's got I'd nothing to do but suck dick. I'd way more time having sex. You you want to get straight to it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Look, I'm. I'm. Sh- I agree. Yeah. But sometimes, because I go down, I go down there for women, not just Lindsay. <laughs> other for any all any women? woman for all, any all woman. Women. Yeah, it doesn't matter if you're, if I date right. you or not. I will go down there, and I think it should be reciprocated. All right. Well, I've got I've got uh, if things don't work out with Lindsay, I've got an email for you. Ready? Hey oh. The title's Why is Cassim so hot? Oh great! No, because things are going really bad. So. Yep. Go ahead. And also, well, also, you, you, you said you go down on her, but you also said like maybe she's not the best at showering. <laughs> you didn't say that. You so you didn't say. You didn't, you, Jamie. Please start reading the email. Okay. Yeah. Hi all. Look, Rob. Sometimes we talk about stuff in the car, and that's car talk, and that's our other podcast, which hasn't launched <sighs> yet. Car talk with Robin Cat. <laughs> Robin Cass, you're robbing me of my dignity right now. Is what you're doing. That that podcast, that podcast can only come out when you break up with Lindsay. You're so lucky she does not listen to this show. (laughs) So I just I I gotta read this email, guys. I'm sorry. Hi all, I am 24 and a huge fan of The Sopranos. I was overjoyed to discover PJ Pants by Robert going on Pot of Bing in the church with Joey Diaz. Hey, all right. Rob and Jamie, you're the coolest. I didn't know Cass and prior to listening, but I've since developed a tiny crush. Okay. He's tall, dark, handsome, funny, and clever. He works those glasses and facial hair. Woo. I'm aware he has a girlfriend due to how much he and Robert clown on her. Be nice. <laughs> So I propose this. Depends when this podcast comes out, if that's true. I might be too young, but should Cassim become single, the man's got options. Anyway, I love the podcast. I'm so excited. This is just the beginning for Pajama Pants. Best, Alexa. I'm going to text Lindsay now. I'm ending it. Just screenshot. I just needed Here's a reason. Here's her Instagram handle if you want to look her oh, up. Oh, yeah. Let's, let's, let's check her. Why is her Instagram handle crossed out? What? Oh, so you can't see well, it. Not is this one of your friends? Gabby? Is that what's going on? To right. not read it, right? <laughs> it's it's Bryce. Right, okay. Well, I You're don't know. You're lucky it's I can like... barely make this out. If she sent it, I'm assuming she's wanting you to see Look, that. that is incredibly flattering. Thank you so much. Okay. Uh, there's that could a be strong your... chance I'll be on the market very soon. That Stay could, tuned. I, that could be I your really... dear John to Lindsay. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there you go. Just sneak it. Just leave it on your nightstand, like, suspiciously, or, like, in your Oh, clothing. dang. Did I accidentally leave oh, this I out? Oh, I my work stuff Is that my fan mail? Oh, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, this is just one of a few, I guess. Yes. Oh, that one. Oh, oh, this oh. one's Alexa. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Um, no, I, I, I trust me. I will memorize your IG handle and uh, commit it to memory. That way, I, I can dispose of the evidence here. Right. All right. Anyway, well, moving on. This is one. from Mark. I don't know who he's talking to, but he just wants to know: d- Did you? G- <laughs> Did you guys ever hook up in real life? Oh, Thanks. Me and, me and Rob. Point. I don't no. know. It doesn't say. People, people, and the title's just question. I remember when we first started doing this podcast, I, I told Rob, I'm like, I wonder if people are going to think that you're in love with Jamie. And and that was because I didn't know the <laughs> the depth and the complexity of the relationship, of but I can totally understand why somebody just hopping on board and seeing the dynamic for the first couple, three episodes thinking that. Right. Now that I've had a lot of hours under my belt, yeah. it's a very complicated, textured, nurturing, supportive friendship. Yes. Um, but yeah, but did you ever suck that dick? <laughs> so one, what, one night we was, were in California. Here we go. I, I was drunk. I know Jane, no, I'm just kidding. We never, <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, oh I'm starting to chop up. Kasim adjusted Have the microphone. Guys? He got so excited. No, no, no. I buy him underwear. That's as close as I get. Yeah. Kasim got me underwear for, uh, his my birthday, birthday that I gave him to him three, I'm wearing them right three months now. later. Yeah. Again? You wore them last week, too. No, no, I wasn't wearing them last week, and he got upset, oh, so now oh, I'm, yeah. Oh, okay. I wish they I'm would thoughtful. sponsor the show, but right now we'll just keep it to Braddock USA and Manscaped. Yeah, yeah. that's right. 
I'm not wearing any underwear. We're fucking rich. Dude. All right, this is from Mar. I'm not wearing a bra. <laughs> this is from Marcus. Hi guys, I'm a huge fan of Sopranos, which is how I discovered pajama pants. And then when I saw you were doing this with Casim, I was so extremely excited. I was a fan of Casim in the early days of YouTube, so this podcast is Fuck honestly yeah. one of my favorites. My question's for Jamie and Rob. Did you guys form a pretty strong friendship right away, or was it gradual? Are there any good stories from the early days of your friendship? Anyway, thanks for the laugh. You guys are the best. Go ahead. I don't know. I'm trying to think. Like, yeah, we've always been close. I mean, we've always been close. But I do think our friendship grew gradually. But I also think, like, when you're 12 and 16, that's an age difference. But as we got older, do you agree? And, like, we like we could go out together in New York and stuff like that. We got even closer, I would say. Like, it yeah. felt like the age gap didn't mean anything after a while. No, I feel like we always had a great relationship. But yeah. I feel like... Uh, also, after I got sober, I feel like we definitely got closer because we could have, like real conversations about stuff yes. and not just you know me being like red and sweaty and 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 <laughs> and, and, and yelling and, and rob and i only got in if we've talked about it though yeah, we've only we only got in about, one fight we yeah. got in one fight and i cried and it was rob's fault it was all my fault i was i was yeah i was terrible but i feel like um we were we were always close because also on the show it was all adults and two kids. Yeah. So we were always, or, and there were times where it was like, hey, you guys have to go to California together. Yes. And or it was us do... with our moms. Yeah. Right. So there was a lot of, we were always very close. Yeah. But I think uh, Jamie was always kind of on like a higher frequency than me. And I, when I got sober, I think I started catching up a little bit as far as like wanting to meditate and be a better person and just that kind of vibe of, of, Thinking about other people. I don't and... know. Rob, Rob from day one, he's just the type of person that people like to be around. Like people, people love having him oh, around, yeah. whether he was sober or not. <laughs> I saw, no, I think you got true. sober and you were able to recognize special parts of yourself that maybe you like didn't realize because you weren't sober before. Rob has this laugh when he's really going and it's yeah. like, <laughs> Like it's that <laughs> high pitched, yep. like Michael. Jackson. And when I hear it, I tick. It tickles me. It to is. Death. It's a He's great. So cute. It's a great one. I want to kiss you. So you know, enough talking about me. So you know, I think there's a difference. Like Kasim said, I on the way home from the last podcast, I went. Through, he was like, "Oh, you should check." Oh no, I think I said something about the DMs. He's like, "You should check them out and respond to some people." Yeah, follow us on Instagram, and maybe you'll get something from Rob, and then maybe Jamie. Yeah. Sure. So I. But you can just we'll do check it. mine, my own out. I actually don't go on DMs, so you'd send me them and I would answer. Oh, okay. Don't check it because I've been sending you a lot of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I feel like there's a difference between somebody telling me they like Sopranos and somebody saying like – like if somebody's like, I watched every episode of Sopranos, I'm like, oh, cool. But when somebody's like, I've listened to every episode of Pajama Pants, I'm like, oh, that's that feels different. And I think the reason is because – Sopranos was brought to us, right? So there was this thing called Sopranos, mm -hmm. and then it was like, hey, do you want to be a part of this thing? Where with this, there was nothing, and it was like we pulled it out of the air, and we're like, okay, here's something. Can we... You created it. Yeah, can yeah. it be a, a thing? And it is. So one of the people in the DMs uh, asked where... She heard us talking about meditating and asked if we could... Um, send her the promo code to get the free month that I sent you guys because I guess we talked about that on here. So I reached out to um, uh, the Waking Up app and I just texted like customer service and I was like, hey, you guys give out free months and I could give them to people. But if I don't want to give everyone my phone number, is there a way that everyone can get the free month? So it's the promo code is Open Mind. And the uh, app is called Waking Up if people want to meditate. Non-sponsored. Oh yeah, this is yeah. sponsored. They don't even. They don't even. They don't even know that we're like. I just asked a right. customer service guy because somebody wanted it, and I thought. Uh, That's really nice of you. I've That's tried. Great. I've tried all the apps. This is the Waking fucking up. best app. Waking and if you do want so Rob's good. phone number, you can DM me, and I will give it to you. Mm. For a price. he will. He's done it several times. You just have to follow Casim. For you gotta like follow me. Photos. Tag three friends. And, <laughs> and then they all have to follow Casim. Yeah, follow me. Leave a comment. Tag three friends, and I'll make sure to send it over. Yeah. Well, this is the last email. What do we got? Open question about struggling with body image. This is from Steven. Hey, guys. I love your show. Thanks for tackling the hard topics last week. I want to ask an open question about struggling with body image. Over the years, I have gained and lost over hundreds of pounds, and it has caused an array of mental and physical issues. It's generally regarded as an everyday struggle with addiction to certain foods. 
What are some personal tips or resources that you guys have used when struggling with body image? I heard Rob say he meditates and it helps with his daily life. How about Jamie or Kasim? Have you guys ever had issues with body image? I'm just looking for some insight from a friend to a friend. Thanks for reading. I'm looking forward to your perspective. Much much respect, Stephen from San Diego. I mean, I think everybody deals with like certain body issues. Um, I mean, Stephen, it sounds like you've had... I don't know how to call it, like success or not. Like, I mean, losing and gaining hundreds of pounds, that's, that's, I mean, that's very hard to do. I'm like, yeah. I, that's hard work, you know, for you to, to lose that amount of weight. And I can understand it being. And it's so easy to gain it back. Of too. Exactly. Yeah, so. Exactly. And so I can understand and, and empathize with how difficult that is. I mean, I had an eating disorder as a young girl, but like, don't most girls have? I don't want to. Well, I, I don't mean, wanna... mine was extreme in the sense yeah. that I had to like have like like see a doctor and therapy. But sure. mine wasn't about. I it was a weird thing because I didn't like how I looked. I did not like how thin I was at all. But it be it wasn't a more of a control thing. Like uh-huh. the fact that I could control what I eat and it would make a scale go down. I got yeah. addicted to that control. And I was afraid that if I lost that control and the scale ever went back up, that it would go out of control. But then, and then I I, don't, I just, I didn't have a good um, relationship to food and exercise for so a couple of years. So you got professional help for it. I did. Mm-hmm. Um, is there, if somebody is struggling with body image stuff, is it they don't have to necessarily have I know I struggled with body image stuff but I didn't have an eating disorder but I still I felt like especially when I was younger really skinny too skinny mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I had really bad acne my teeth are crooked I wore glasses I had big nose like I really no. I mean how much time you got buddy uh, <laughs> but like there was there was a lot of stuff that I just would look in the mirror and like not be into that person mm-hmm. you know I'd be like that person is ugly to me and I am that person and but I still I I ate normally or I had you know fast metabolism I still struggle with some of that stuff um but that was when I didn't really like I didn't really have uh like I didn't have an identity I I feel like I've come a long way when it comes to that I think um talking to someone is yes very valuable yes um but I also think you really grow into loving yourself as you just get older and you're just as a young person you're all you're so um there's just so much you're inundated with like especially now with Instagram I can't even imagine growing up with Instagram and what I would be like right now if I was 16 oh, with Instagram no way it's got to be no so much harder way. now um I don't know it, it it is such a hard thing I I just know that in the last few years, when I have exercised and I have been eating better, um, I feel better about myself mentally mm. and, and physically that comes along with it too. Um, if you're losing uh, hundreds of pounds and then gaining hundreds of pounds, you know, that seems to, it seems like maybe you would want to talk to somebody I about agree. it, I would say, I right? Yeah, I'm, I'm like hesitant to give any specific advice because I just don't know if I have the correct yeah. advice to give i think that that's and there's no i'm not a fat shamer by any means i just would rather you feel happy with who you are on the inside and have it regardless of what you look like on the outside yes um i know for me too like when i sort of change the mindset of like eating healthy because it would make me feel good as opposed to what it would make me look like yeah um, it really changed my relationship oh, that's a good with point. food. That's a great if point. If that makes sense. Yeah. And I also think like it's it's kind of crazy to me what we learn about in school and what we don't. How they don't teach in school more about food and that maybe it's because they didn't know, right? Like I remember that pyramid and if you look at that now you're like, "Oh, this is all wrong." It's fucking upside so, down uh, and incorrect. Yeah, yeah so yeah, I absolutely. guess that's why they don't teach but They don't teach it in medical school. Right. Yeah. They don't. Yeah. Doctor. Like I've gone into a doctor with a problem and then I fix it on my own by diet where he told me like, oh, take this, you know, and I was like, oh, I don't want to do. So I think a big thing is instead of just going like this is what healthy people eat. So I should have the oh salad. OK, I'm just going to do that or that. It's like really learning about it. Mm-hmm. Right. Really figuring out why not only what food is healthy, why it's healthy. You know, learning if 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 I eat. 
um, a big meal and then with protein and then I have a dessert after, it's not as bad for me as if I eat that same meal, wait six hours, and then just eat that dessert yeah. because the protein helps you digest the sugar. Sure. So when you learn oh. all this stuff- There's a science to how the food works in your that. body. Yeah, so there's yeah. a lot of great documentaries out there. Forks Over Knives is a really good one to start with. There's a lot of good stuff where you- it's it's just and I and I'm lucky that I find it fun and interesting and learning yeah, about food is me too. and it because it started making me feel good when I was like oh shit wait I did yeah. what they said in that movie and I woke up and I didn't feel like shit I That's will say I, that's a great point and and it ties in I always say winning begets winning so when you when you get the ball rolling and even if it's a small change but it's it's going in the right direction making the right choice the next day and the day after that becomes a whole lot easier. Mm -hmm. um, and that's why I go to the gym in the morning, now that it's open, um, because I feel like it sets up the rest of my day. Because after the gym, I'm like, well, I'm not going to eat like trash because I just, even though you technically can after you lift heavyweights or whatever. Um, but it, if I do something good in the morning, it makes all the easier, the better decisions easier to do for the rest of the day. One piece of advice I will say is for me, just my experience, Intermittent fasting was really yeah. good. Yeah. And I know you do it. Every day, yeah. Um, there's a great subreddit. Uh, I think it's just r slash intermittent fasting. And um, it's a great resource for you to, if you if you don't know about it, to learn about it. But essentially, you're giving yourself, your body time to um, actually be hungry. And uh, when your body enters, you know, the 16th hour or whatever it is, it helps the, you die. I don't know that I'm not going to repair It repairs your DNA. Like uh, it claims There's all this, all stuff. this stuff. It helps yeah. with your sleep. Um, if you just limit your food intake to a window of time, you do one meal a day, right? Or you did. I, I do two meals a day a lot. Yeah. During quarantine, I've been doing one. But for me, the reason, and listen, we're not recommending, we're not no, doctors. just blah, research blah, blah. it. Go, yeah, talk to a doctor. It. Let me just preface this. If you're really worried about it, talk to a doctor first and then do all then this do stuff. Then do the things yeah. Yeah. But uh, what I realize is when I diet, if I was going to diet for a week, I would fail. So what I have to do is I do intermittent fasting to where I have those two meals a day. Now I have one. And what happens is if at 9 o'clock at night, let's say, I'm like, man, I'm starving. I know in my head, I'm like, well, guess what? Tomorrow you can fucking pig out. Like you could eat whatever you want when you're not intermittent fasting. Whereas if I'm dieting and it's like, right. well, hey, it's 9 o'clock at night and I'm starving. It's like, well, don't worry. In the morning you get an egg or right. like whatever this small amount of food is. I, I just think about it all night. Yeah. Whereas What's I know, your hours? What are, you, what are your... So a lot of times I'll just do one big meal, but sometimes I just try and keep eating food into an eight-hour window every single day. So right. what I was doing when I was doing two meals is like, let's say a giant meal at noon, like a really big meal at noon, a really big meal at seven-ish or something like that, and that was it. And it was I was never... Like, oh, my God, I'm so hungry. Yeah. You know, maybe right after I left the gym, I'd be really hungry. But I fucking love it. And the whole point is there's it's crazy how many people go, oh, I do that. And then you're like, well, write down for a week to make sure you do that. And they're like, oh, I don't do that. Because right. you don't realize. Like, you're just, just oh, there's a bag of yeah. this. And I just had, oh, but I just had four of those. Yeah. Or I just had, but you're just constantly. Get on Invisalign. That'll keep you from snacking. I think it's so great to um, do <laughs> if you stop eating at like eight. You just go to bed, and then most of your fasting is done at night. Yeah. And then you wake up. I, I For those of you that eat breakfast every day, it'll be hard for the first couple of weeks because you're so used to eating breakfast. But if you just wake up, just have coffee and water. You drink it black? You can have black. I think you can have— Yeah, you can have black coffee at zero calorie or negative calorie, whatever. Okay, yeah, have have black coffee. I always put, like, oat milk or something in it, but maybe I'm fucking up my That's, fast. Yeah, then you're off your fast. Um, but I take but also, protein shakes anyway, so I, I can't even fast right now. But, but anyways— there, But there's a thing— to uh, where we're talking about with breakfast, where like if you're a person who needs breakfast, just eat breakfast and then have an early dinner. Then do your early dinner. There's, it's fine. Yeah, there's, there's a lot want. of time spent from people that kind of barely know. All right, what let's shift. About. Let's shift gears to this. Next <laughs> scene, okay. Yeah. The word like. I'm an elderly listener, and I appreciate your podcast for a fresh look from you youngsters. That said, I wish you would listen to yourself speaking and notice how often you use the word like. I mean, like. You could all use that word less. Scathing. Hoping to hear some improvement. <laughs> Thanks, and hopefully my constructive criticism doesn't upset you too much. Scathing. I completely hear you. Yeah, I could. I, I could not. And I'm sorry. I could not agree more. I say like all the time, and I also. Say I disagree. It, I say everything perfect. You do. You don't say like a lot. <laughs> I say it even more in here because I have a thing in my head which is 
the slower we talk, people are going to tune out, right? So I just have this thing where, like, if I could cram all this information into this thing, and then, like, they can't, it's like somebody's going to turn that dial, and I'm like, zip, 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 you know? You just like, said, like, so many times. I know. But here, so I don't saying. even notice it, because <laughs> when I hear the podcast, when I listen to it, I hear Rob speak how he speaks to me off the sure, podcast, and sure. that's part of the conversational nature that I like yes. about, that I like Sorry, this. Natalie. This is just how we speak. He enjoys yeah, that no. part. I, I used to I, say a lot of ums, and I still do ums a lot, but I try and catch myself. But they're, I hate hearing myself say like. I say it a lot. It, I, really, it bothers me, and I, I understand why it bothers you, Natalie. It bothers me. And can I say I like that? I'm not even trying to. I like that email because there's so many people where when they give criticism, they're just like, oh, this sucks. And no, yeah, she's anything. trying to be kind. Yeah, I enjoy people who are, hey, maybe, like, I'm a fan of the podcast, maybe say like, don't say like so much. Instead of being like, I stopped listening, you know, right. because you say like too much. Now I'm thinking every time I say like. Her name's Natalie. How old are you? I've never met an old Natalie. Have you? You're going to know an old Jamie one day. Have you ever met an old Jamie? I'll die before I see you turn old. Oh. <laughs> Jamie's like the woman in uh, Game of Thrones. She's going to take off that necklace and she's like. <laughs> <laughs> the red? Yeah. The fire? What's her the, name? The red queen. I don't know what you're oh, dude, about. that I've chick is it. so my speed. What does that mean? Like, she looks a lot skin, like your girlfriend now. Pale I'm skin, red pale. hair, just pink, perfect pink Fleshy nipples. Pink. Oh, what? <laughs> Not where I saw that going. Yeah. Oh, There's creamy, a... creamy, cream, cream. Okay, yeah. So hey, thanks for the email, Natalie. Here's something I want to know. If, if when we're on the topic of emails, I want an email from somebody if there, we have one out there who's wasn't a Casim G fan and wasn't a Sopranos fan and somehow found the podcast. Because do we even have one? You think? Well, no. I did find there was no? an email in so? here that was. It's kind of the antithesis to what um, Natalie just sent us. Okay, and this is a this is a good one. I did kind of comb through this earlier listen this is good feedback and i want to i want us to feel good yeah and not be up in our heads about likes and ums okay yeah if i think about what i say i'm gonna it's gonna this podcast is gonna be horrible so i just have to go okay this is from a gentleman named grover and he's not a muppet or on sesame <laughs> street he says just wanted to say i think you you three really found something here I found your podcast through Talking Sopranos, and I thought I'd give yours a chance. So thanks. Shout out Talking Sopranos, Steve and Michael. Yes. Being on-air talent for many years myself and now program director for other on-air staff, I'd like to say that all three of you are very good and are willing to be real and possibly, more important, vulnerable on the show. That's not easy for many. Robert, I see you instinctively keeping the show on topic and moving things along and watching episodes over your past six months. It's been nice to see all three of you catching a stride and comfortableness. That's it. Just wanted to say well done to all of you and keep up the good work. Thank Grover. you, Grover. I don't know if I should shout out his radio station or not, I but I feel like I could out him and it might be... Uh, He's in Cincinnati, let's just say Thank that. Thank you, Grover. We could say That's it, really right? Nice. Why not? Yeah, he's a nice guy. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Grover nice at... Uh, he didn't say anything horrible. B105. Yeah. Get your country hey. on. Hey. 97.3. Hitting you with that wolf. smooth. Oh, woo. <laughs> 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 we both just did Perfect. that. Perfect. That was beautiful, guys. We really are catching our stride. We are catching <laughs> our stride. <laughs> Thanks, Grover. <laughs> the uh, if I want to know if... Companies were to go out of business because of quarantine. What company would make you the saddest? If mm. tomorrow you found out, hey, like for you, it's probably Patagonia, like something stupid. But <laughs> they are one of the most ethical, responsible I mean, this companies. Guy, this guy talks about Patagonia more than his girlfriend. I mean, just because you see this vest, like I don't fucking care. I'm dude. really sad. I'm really I've gotten sad. almost just as many blowjobs from my Patagonia reversible <laughs> down bivy. <laughs> As I have with my girlfriend. I mean, you know, I get sad for everyone. Like, I get I know. so <laughs> sad. There's going to be a montage of businesses that went out of business Weeping. during Corona, and Jamie's Weeping. going to cry. That I Last night, I watched a special on all these music venues that are having to close, because there's, like, there's without cash, they have... There's nothing that they can do. Like well, I watched, they can't book acts. Like they, like they, they don't like they, their type of business has no foreseeable future right now, and it's devastating. And I just like these like places like the Troubadour. Like you know, they may never open again. And it's, I'm so yeah. sad Historic for these places. restaurants yeah. that have really tried to pr pivot and keep their employees. Like I, my friend Melina has like 40 employees at her restaurant. What's and it she, called? 
It's called Olive and Time here in LA. And she immediately pivoted and made it like a, gr- a grocery. Um, right. Smart. And then she started doing takeout. And I think they're able to open mid-July to only 30% capacity. And she's she's just not paying herself. And she's paying our employees because they have families. And I just, I really feel for these people. Yeah. One of my other really good friends, Sarah, her husband is Vinny of John and Vinny's. And like, they're really successful people. But this mm-hmm. is fucking hit everybody really, really hard. And it's just, you know, I nail salons like i think of i just like go down the list and i start to really get dark and spiral because i just and it like i because i'm like oh my god i'm so lucky that cutter has a job that he's still employed Mm -hmm. and theragun's still needed and more than ever because people can't go get massages you know that they can self-treat themselves yeah here with a theragun theragun needs to sponsor us by the way would I'll love one. I'm very it. sore today. Yeah, right? Oh, my God. This you guys chair. don't have some? This chair. You say that every time. I she do, says, don't we, I? We should, get, we should cut together <laughs> clips of her every time. Like, oh, you cut. Ha, it's in the mail. <laughs> Next time, show up with two cases of therapy. Just come to my guns. house. Just come to my house. Anyway, I, I don't know um, why I'm no, talking that's about this. A, I, was, I just, I really feel. For well, no, here, the I small really, businesses really, are, ugh. that's the ones. But like, yeah, I don't know. Olive and thyme? Thyme? Olive and thyme. Thyme. Like the spice. The spice or the herb. And then Johnny and Vinny's. John and Vinny's. John but and that's all. That's LA Sorry. based. I mean, that's local here. You know. Well, not... look, we got some local listeners. Well, Jamie, we not watched... Grover over in Cincinnati at ninety-seven point three. The Wolf. Ow! <laughs> <laughs> Jay, we watched, or I watched, because I'm a good friend, uh, and not a lover at any time, past, present, or future, of Jamie Lynn's. No, <laughs> just uh, friend. And I watched you perform live singing for the first time in how long? 18 years. 18 years. And how was you, it? Yeah. you started to cry. I did. Well, I cried because... Little bitch. Um, oh, Are you, yeah. Were you Little acting? Baby, like, bitch. No. no. No, I didn't want to cry. So I couldn't tune in. I was driving, but um, I promoted it on my Instagram. <laughs> so he was driving that reading. dick into Lindsay's throat. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Oh. Sorry. That's the end of the episode, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, it's just the beginning. Yeah, well, no, I cried because I sang this song um, called No One Is Alone from the musical Into the Woods. And the, the lyrics are just basically explaining, it's like one character is explaining to a child character that in, in the musical that everyone's going to have different opinions. People are taught things that they think are true that could not be true to you or to others. But the truth of the matter is nobody's alone. Like there's always somebody that is with you. And at the Mm -hmm. end of the song, it's basically like saying like, hold on, like someone's on your side, meaning I'm on your side. And I dedicated the song to people that are experiencing, are experiencing injustices and, you know, and, you know, over basic human rights and people who are mourning losses and fighting for their lives and risking their lives and all that kind of stuff. And so at the end of the song, I got, I started crying. Well, doesn't that, really isn't emotional. that great that you were able to connect to the th- music yes. in a way where, you, see if it, that's what makes you a great ar- uh, actor an artist is like, you connected to the piece that you were doing. Whereas I would just be thinking about what's the next line I got to say. You know what I mean? Like I, right. you're you were you shed your nervousness and you weren't. I'm assuming you maybe you were nervous before it, but the fact that you can connect to what you're saying is awesome. Oh, thanks. See, I'm so neurotic. I couldn't even connect to the words because I'm just watching, like feeling like the. Oh, I hope she doesn't throw up. I'll throw up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like the the empathy for Jamie of like. Oh God, I know she doesn't want to mess up. or the, And then also, like, I saw you, like, go like this to your nose. And I'm like, oh, I know she her biggest fear is having a booger in her nose. And she doesn't want to have a booger in her nose. And I then, did. My nose started running. Because the first thing that happens when I cry is my nose runs. Do you know how many <laughs> acting roles I've had where I've had a director come up to me like, is there any way... <laughs> your nose doesn't can Jamie, stop running um, can and I'm just, like uh, if you, you want bogey. me to cry in this scene I'm <laughs> yeah. gonna have snot like I I literally it Bubble like as soon right as I start tearing there's like a like like something happens yeah. in my nose where it's like that faucet <laughs> goes off to like what everything has it's really really that's so funny sucky. see when I when I throw up I cry and stuff you comes do? out of my nose like er, like I don't cry but like tears start coming out of my eyes and Stuff starts coming in my nose. Know, it's like everything. When I go on roller coasters, I drool. <laughs> you drool? <laughs> wow. You, you I like. I don't know why. You... Like, there's something happens. Like, as soon as we start going fast in the wind, like, I. Is like, there a I faster way to spread corona than you on a roller coaster? <laughs> <laughs> you need to hang out with the Simone guy from 90 Day Fiance because you, I, he, I he 
Disney so drools just about like, everything I, he does. I'll like hype myself up and be like, I'm not going to drool this time. All like, of Santa I'm Clarita has out. Corona now because Jamie did the loop in Viper. <laughs> Jesus Christ! You could you could you could come off the roller coaster and pay twenty dollars to get a picture of you getting Corona behind Jamie. <laughs> <laughs> and here's the moment, the moment. You got Corona. I framed it. <sighs> oh my God! It so wait, sucks so what bad. company? What company would you be very sad if they went out of business? Like if you had to pick, if you were like, like, if you were thinking this is the number one company, if they went out of business, I'd be devastated. Like if my son's preschool had to close or something like that. But I mean more like something that has products like that you'll enjoy. Well, look, uh, my girlfriend's had to shut her company down. And so Mm. she owes me so much goddamn money that that is devastating to me. (laughs) It's devastating (laughs) to me. Oh, that's that's podcast talk. But the stuff I bring up is not podcast talk. Well, look, there's in car talk. There's car talk with Robin Cass. What, how much We're robbing my dignity on IGTV. If we get enough people that want us to do it, I swear to God, we Keep could do talking. a vert. You gotta check on both. Hold yeah, on. how much? How much money does she owe you? Let's uh, um, let's let's get into this accounting. Hold on. Okay, it says here, Lindsay. How many Ooh. zero? I'm gonna need you to write <laughs> how six many, zeros. How many zeros in a billion? Uh, look, it's enough. You know what? During the <laughs> pandemic, when the gym was closed. It was notice a noticeable thing for me, and I I know I talk about the gym, like I'm some fucking beefcake. I'm not like I just have to go there because mentally it's important for me to go to the gym and feel like I'm taking care of myself. Mm-hmm. And I didn't have and I and I can't work out at home for whatever reason. I can't. I don't have weights. I don't I don't like to run around what my fucking get- shitty neighborhood. I don't like to do that. So if I don't have access to the gym and something about driving to the gym, there's like I'm getting in the headspace when I'm driving to the gym. So I yeah, know I'm going to go there. Up. I'm going to work warm up. Oh, Natalie is squirting right now. Is that was that the girl who loves Alexa? you? Or is that Alexa? Why? Did I say like too much? No, no, no. No, oh. I mean the girl who has the hots for you. There's like she's the Alexa. Like, Na- Natalie you... is the old bitch who says we said, <laughs> we said like. She's not a bitch. Natalie, you're, I'm you're, sorry. When you're, you're, you you're... talk about working out, there's like, you like turn up like a few decibels. Like I could just, you like, you, you just like, it's I know. Not, it could really you imagine somebody hearing me talk about wor- only listening to this podcast, talking about going to the gym all the time and then seeing me in the street and being like, you work out? You go to the fucking gym? <laughs> yeah. Um, I, it's well, they like know a meditation. Do, they know you can only do 36 push-ups, so they I've won't been, be too shocked. I've been every day this week. I feel fucking great. I feel better than I have mm. all pandemic. Mm-hmm. I'm fucking, I, I look at myself in the mirror again. You know, see, I haven't, does, I've been avoiding myself this whole time. Now you give yourself a little. Now I see myself, and then I'll pull my now. pull my panties down a little bit, and I'll take a look and see what I got, and that sometimes I'll, fl- I'll, I'll feel myself. How does that not drive you to be able to work out at home? Like to, I don't. I need weights. I don't have them. And I don't have a, sp- a place for them. Are you yeah. done? Jamie's, you don't want to hear me say panties Jamie's anymore. Checked out. As soon as you get all fucking. Jamie, when I work out, my panties Wait, get moist. Wait, you about whipping your penis out in the mirror again? No, Did no, he do that. No, no whipping it out. Just whip slow, pe- just slowly lowering my he shorts. Just wants see, to see his V. One, his v. One, Did, you, one woman's trash is another woman's gold. One day, Jamie, you will realize what you were looking for this entire buddy, time is right in front of you. Your, bu- <laughs> your buddy Tony. Um, Cavalero. Yeah. yeah. He had a funny Instagram the other day of like how to get the perfect V. Yes. And it's just him like literally. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Which Tony's by the way, great. also my son, Jack. He's got a V. He's obsessed with, do you know, like it's, it's gone viral. Everyone that does those pew, pew, pew. Like, wait up. Hold a minute. It's a 45. <laughs> like, you know that? You what know the what fuck are you talking about? about? The I TikTok, heard about that what the fuck are you talking or about? Okay. You know, so TikTok, TikTok. Tony has a really funny one. I'll pull it up so I don't sound like an idiot. But Too Jack late, is obsessed with it to the point where Jack will take my phone and go, see Tony? Oh, really? See Tony? Oh, great. And I have a video When's the last time him. he asked about me? Never. Dead to he your doesn't family. know who you are. I'm dead to your family. You don't care to ever come. Here, look. This is Jack watching it. Pew, pew, pew. Hold up. Wait a minute. This is great for the job. audience. <laughs> He's oh, just okay. chowing okay. on a- Chocolate was that a fig cookie. Newton he was eating? No, can, can you send that to cookie. Bryce? Can you send news. that to Bryce so we can put it on the podcast so people could see it? Yeah. That might make that a little interesting. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> uh, dude, you upset Rob. He's fucking pissed. He was talking shit about you before I we started today. Yeah, sorry. good luck anybody ever finding me talking shit about Jamie. Um, all right. Oh, there's one other thing I want to bring up. Nope. And we're done. Okay. This fucking... The women on Real Housewives. Oh Jesus! You're gonna end it on this? Are the oh Jamie? Because Jamie, let Jamie, we lost Jamie. I'm bringing it right back. That's okay. how you do it. I hey, also have to pee. Th- that so guy from quick. fucking KTU is gonna is gonna love this because I'm bringing it back. <laughs> the these people from 
Real Housewives, these women are insane. They do the craziest things on camera. They're ho- anybody who watches the show would be like, they are. You know, is, New York is operating on another. That's that's what I'm talking about. Level. New York. So I'm four episodes behind in New York. So I don't know what's going on. But the last episode I saw was so insane. This woman shows up. So let's say these women are 50, 60, 60, right? These women are like 60 years old. Some of them. Yeah, right? They're insane. They're blacking out drunk. They're sleeping, whatever, you got, which is fine. No problem. No but, problems. But then there's a new girl introduced to the group, right? They meet her. They all get in a bikini and they go to jump in the pool and they go, oh my God, you have tattoos? Oh. Which, which okay, I, I was like, no, oh, okay, these are just side women. But then they say, we don't hang out with girls who have tattoos. Whoa. Dude. Can you no. ima- no. like even if you're the greatest person ever to not hang out with somebody who has tattoos? I feel is like crazy. it was shot out of order because you have you gotten to the point where you've seen Leah go batshit fucking crazy? No. The last okay. thing I saw was she was drunk in the pool. I'm oh, way behind. It has not where? What are you? Stop watching I'm 98 very Day Fiance busy. for a minute. 98 Day Fiance. Yeah. <laughs> 98 Day That's going to be my show. That's a special, that yeah. That's how long I you want to be away from your kids when this is all over. Exactly. Uh, just, I, you need to watch them bef- next time, before you see me yeah. next time. But it's just, to hear these women, like, they're fucking slosh, and they're saying these horrible things about people, and they have horrible reputations, and this one woman is like, has these fake companies, and she's selling it's those things, and then she's like, Oh, you have tattoos? And this girl has like a little tattoo on like her leg or like, you know, like nothing crazy. And they're like, they're literally, they sit together and they're all like, we shouldn't hang out with her. That's so funny. It's crazy. Meanwhile, they have like Botox in their lips, face, Oh, everything. They're everything. T- the, the one lady's like, yeah. t- the the woman, Ramona, walking down the the runway is the greatest clip on the internet. Of the whole, like she has these fake... Uh, oh listen, I don't want to, I don't want to shit on anybody. Thanks for listening, guys. And um, thanks to Braddock. Thanks, USA. Braddock USA, for the face I'm masks. I'm obsessed with my new mask. Um, yeah, thanks, we Manscaped. We really appreciate it, and thanks, Manscaped. And thank you guys for watching. If you're watching on YouTube, hit the subscribe button and click the notification bell so you get updates on when our videos come out. It's every Tuesday morning, by the way. And Monday mornings is when the audio comes out on iTunes or, or wherever you get your uh, they, podcast. And they should really be tuning in to see your body progress every week. <laughs> I'd say, yeah, if you're like Alexa and one of my dozens of other fans and you want to see this body in person, make sure you're tuning in on YouTube. My dozens. Um, yeah, and uh, the other thing is we just hit 10,000 subscribers on YouTube, so that's incredible. Stop. Um, and we don't need to keep big upping ourselves. F- we can just say goodbye. Thank you guys for listening. Uh, on, on Instagram, too. Um, just follow us on Instagram. Rob might send you a message. Bryce, cut it. And uh, Jamie might send you a message. <laughs> Love you. And slide into my DMs. There's a strong chance I'll be single uh, coming up soon. And uh, strong. Yeah, strong. 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 And we're going to go find Cassim some avocado toast. Yeah. yeah. All right. Thanks for watching. Thanks, guys. <laughs>